Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over whether or not a wound is infected. Have you ever wondered if a wound is actually infected? Because all wounds go through the inflammatory phase where it looks a little bit swollen, it looks a little bit red, but is it actually infected? And did you know that there is a way to realize and determine whether or not you need just a topical antibiotic or antimicrobial or an actual systematic antibiotic? That is what we are going to go over today. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So let's get started, guys. So why is determining infection so important? First off, we need to know whether or not a wound is infected because we need to catch it quickly and start treating it so we prevent further complications from happening. So if we can catch it right away where it's just in that local phase and we can treat it with a topical antimicrobial instead of a systematic um, antibiotic, it is so much better off. Why you ask? Because when we take an oral antibiotic, we have a chance of the bacteria on the wound uh, becoming resistant, okay? So we're always talking about this antibiotic resistant bacteria. So if we can prevent the overuse of antibiotics, this is what we want to do. And that also comes in play with actually determining is it a local infection or is it a deep spreading infection? Because for local infections, we only need to treat them topically. And that's what I'm going to be able to show you here today. I'm going to give you an awesome chart to use so you can tell for yourself, okay, is this a local infection? Is this a deep spreading infection? And being able to talk to the doctor and giving that advice of saying, hey, you know, this is just a local infection. Can we get a topical for this? Or, you know what, this is a deep spreading infection. We do need to start an uh, antibiotic right away. Maybe we could do a wound culture and find out the exact bacteria that we're dealing with so we can treat it appropriately. So this is the wonderful chart that I was telling you guys about. Um, so many nurses, I, I mean, it took, it actually took me a while to come across this in my education. So I am a wound care specialist. I did go to university for that. Um, and it was quite some time through all my uh, nursing education. I never came across this chart. Um, I was working as a wound care nurse for years. And then I went to school to become a wound care specialist. And that's when I finally came across this. That's why I am trying to bring awareness to this amazing chart, because it will do so much for you in your practice to be able to properly treat wounds. Okay, so let's get started with this chart. I'm very, very excited to share it. I have shared it before and thought I would do it again, because I wanted to bring this excitement, okay? My previous videos, I mean, what can I say? I was new to uh, the whole um, YouTube and now I want to bring this to you again, okay? So if you've seen my previous one, here it is again. Determining infection with nerds and stonies. So nerds, okay, this is for local infection. We treat it with an antimicrobial, okay, or an antibacterial topically. Topically, we treat this with. So anytime we're using this chart, we're going to check off the symptoms that we're having. We need three symptoms on either side of the chart to say it's clinically infected, okay? So for local infection, we're just talking about local infection, the nerds side of this right now, non-healing, 
increase exudate, red bleeding, that friable tissue, when you touch it, it bleeds. Is there debris, that slough, the necrotic tissue? Um, it doesn't have a clean wound base. Does it have an odor, a smell? Wounds actually shouldn't smell, okay? They shouldn't really have a, an odor to them, like a foul odor, I would say. You know, sometimes with the bleeding of a wound, um, you can have a slight odor, but it shouldn't be a foul odor. So if we have any three of those for local infection, we treat it with an antimicrobial and antibacterial, okay? Three or more signs is clinical infection. It needs to be treated, okay? Then we have our deep spreading infections, so our stonies, okay? We need to treat this with an antibiotic. We need to start an antibiotic when we have three or more symptoms of stonies. Okay, now I always suggest, um, sometimes doctors just like to throw antibiotics at wounds, um, especially with um, antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. We need to be swabbing these wounds, seeing, doing a culture and sensitivity, seeing what type of antibiotics are going to work on this wound because we could be treating unnecess with unnecessary antibiotics, okay? Wound cultures, we need to do these more. We need to be advocating for more wound cultures. I know where I'm at, wound cultures, they were not very much of a thing. Like I would have to be bringing it up to a doctor like, hey, we should, you know, we should be doing a, a culture. I haven't really seen much improvement with this antibiotic we should be doing that right away, standard of care, okay? To treat with an antibiotic, what are we treating? How do we know what to treat with? Swab the wounds, okay? But we can determine this infection with stonies. So increase in size. Has the wound increased in size? Do we have a temperature increase? Now, does the tissue around the wound feel warm? Now, infrared thermometers, I mean, they go up Canadian Tire and they go on sale for like 20 bucks. They are fantastic infrared thermometers for taking the temperature of the wound, checking the temperature, checking it bilaterally on the other side, checking it to surrounding tissues. Is the temperature increased in that area? Okay, that's a sign. Pro to bone. Can you use your cotton tip applicator and touch bone? Is there new breakdown or satellite lesions? Okay, so satellite lesions, this is a great indication that there is a deep spreading infection. You have a wound here, and then all of a sudden you start getting a little wound up here. That is an indication, a pure indication of deep spreading infection. Um, do we have redness, swelling around the outside of that wound? Do we have an increase in exudate? Is there a odorous smell to that wound? If we have three or more signs of stonies, we need to be treating with an antibiotic. Guys, when I say it's so important to be determining what type of infection it is, it is so important. And it is also so important that we're not treating wounds for infections that are not clinically infected, unless they are in an area that is at high risk for infection. If the patient has comorbidities that are putting them at high risk of infection, that's the only time we use it prophylactically, okay? That's the only time we use antimicrobials, antibacterials prophylactically. Other than that, a wound will heal so much quicker if we're not using antimicrobials or antibacterials. A wound will heal quicker through moisture balance, okay? And there are so many products out there that don't have antimicrobials in them. And they just have to balance um, moisture in a wound. You have your meshes, you have your foams, you have your alginates, okay? 
these all come in plain or they come with antimicrobials on them, okay? So first determine, use the skills you have. Do we have an infection? Is it clinically infected? Do I use an antimicrobial? If you don't have infection and don't have reason to be using them prophylactically, just go with plain products for moisture balance. Moisture balance, once again, is the most important part of wound healing. It will heal a wound three to times, three to five times faster than if you don't have a moisture balanced wound. Okay, guys. But that is all that I have for this video. I hope you did find it very helpful in your practice or if you're treating a wound at home. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.